Welcome to this week's episode of The Savvy Flipper. I am your host and business strategist, Clara Rose, and this is Larry Vanderhoof, your resident expert and construction manager. Welcome to another episode. Yes, let's get started. Today we're going to talk about getting flipping started, right? Getting started with your new flipping business. It's kind of a fun play on words, but it's really about you getting a firm foundation, getting started correctly as a new real estate investor. We like to call it savvy flipping. Okay, let's dive into some of the basics of getting started. All right, I think um, we need to look at making a decision. Uh, and what I mean by that is know what you're going to be doing, what your target market is uh, from the get-go. You'll want to decide if, if you're going to be a flipper, which simply is, as you probably are aware of, means purchasing a house, doing some renovation work on it, whether it's extensive or whether it's cosmetic, and then turn around and reselling it for a profit, and you walk away and you do it again. That's a flipper. That's a flipper. Yep, or being a wholesaler. Correct. A wholesaler, you're just really finding the building for somebody else. Uh, you find it, you do a little bit of investigative research, see what it looks like, what it's going to take to bring it up to the area comps. Uh, you send information off to somebody who maybe is looking for a flipper and you sell it directly to them. Yep, so you're kind of like a, a broker. broker a little bit, right? But you're the one out there finding the deals. Right. You're the one doing that that pre-inspection, you're the one doing the estimating for purposes of getting a deal, you're doing the negotiating and you're getting the contract. Right. Now, you're probably not going to make nearly as much money as you would mm -hmm. if you were doing the flipping yourself. However, you don't have like 90% of the headaches either. Ah, this you're is You're really just bringing this deal to somebody who wants it. Yep. So you don't have any of the construction management. No. You don't have any of those headaches. You just bring the interested parties together, get the contract, find the end buyer, and get paid handsomely for yep. your efforts, yep. right? And there are a ton of flippers out there who are not interested in getting their own deals, right? They're interested in, in the deals, but they want someone else to do the yeah. legwork to yeah. bring them to the yeah. table. Yeah, because it's a lot of work to find, to find sure. the right houses and, and whatnot. It's yeah. not like they're just falling off an apple tree or something. <laughs> So. That's true. And depending <laughs> on where you are living in the country right now, if you're in a hot market like some places are, it's tougher to find the deals. Yeah. So, but if you are interested in being a wholesaler, you can get some, you know, 10, 20, even $30,000 in your pocket by just being the middleman. So, that's part of the deciding process for yep. sure though. Okay. What else do we need to decide? Do you want to be a landlord? <laughs> the best way to do that is to buy a house, fix it up, and just keep it as a rental. Now, a lot of people will try to go it alone on this and think, well, you know what, I'm going to be a landlord, and, and if there's issues, I'll just go out and fix them. I highly recommend that if you want to go down this avenue of being the landlord, that you get a property management company to handle all of that stuff for you. The last thing you want is a phone call at 2 o'clock in the morning saying, hey, our AC unit went out or the hot water heater's leaking all over the garage or whatever <laughs> because you're the one that's going to go out and fix it. Yep. So you're, you're just getting keep that, that phone in call. mind. <laughs> yes. But a property management company, they handle those things for you. Absolutely. If there's an issue, they're, they're there regardless they're of what care time of it. it is, yeah. what the issue is. Yep, because you're paying you're them paying to, to do, do that. Yep. And also, the, they are finding the renters for you, right? So they're doing the background checks, and they're the ones collecting rents, and they're the ones, if somebody can't make their rent, they're the ones who deal with that. Yep. If they move out, they're the ones who deal with that. So it, it's just, you could either become a burnt out landlord by doing it yourself, or you can hire somebody, and it's a nominal fee, and they will manage all that for you. So we recommend that. Yeah. It's it's sure. it's a great it's a great re um, ongoing revenue source. Sure. Um, but yeah, you just you just want to make sure be if you're going to be the landlord, you want to do it smart. Yeah. Yep. Okay. And what about short-term rentals? Because that's kind of like being a landlord, but right. but not. Right. Short-term or rent rentals are a, another great income source. Um, typically, they get considerably more money for short-term rental because they're vacation rentals. Really, what it boils down to. 
Uh, so the rents on those are typically by the weekend or by the week or by the day. Um, but even still, you're still going to want to find a, a management company to deal with all of that stuff because when people come and stay Friday, Saturday and leave out Sunday, somebody's got to go in behind there and, and get the place cleaned up, mm -hmm. ready for the next people that come in, deal with any issues. Um, uh, uh, again, as Claire had mentioned, they're the ones that's going to handle the paperwork and, and, the, and the contracts for rentals and, and such on. So. Yep. All that stuff. The great yep. thing about those companies for short-term rentals is they l handle everything and they deposit your profit. Yep. <laughs> so they do all the stuff and then just pot deposit your profit into your account. Yep. So pretty slick way. Um, they're different beasts. You want to learn about them before you jump into that. But now we're in decision mode, so decide if that's something you want. Right. Okay. Um, let's talk about uh, property parameters. Right. Single family, yep. multi family. Again, it's, it's getting what back do you want to do? Exactly, deciding what it is that you want to want to focus on. Uh, and if you're new to flipping or if you're new to real estate investing, you want to pick a lane and you want to stay in, in that lane for at least a while until you get your feet wet, until you understand the industry and, and the nuances of, of each individual thing. Uh, residential properties are a lot different than commercial properties, you know, so uh, they're a lot different than multifamily units. Um, so each one of these have their own little nuances that you want to kind of uh, know about and decide where do you want to go. Um, residential are probably the most straightforward. Single family uh, residential, yep, yeah. Yep. The easiest yep. for sure to yep. get started. Yep. Not, a, not a bad place to get started. Yep. Okay, so once we've decided what it is that we want to do, where we want to specialize, at least to start with, let's talk about getting started slowly. Let's not jump into um, a big old commercial or multi, you know, 100 right. unit apartment complex right away. Right, and this goes back to, again, what this whole series is about here is, is knowing what you're wanting to do. Uh, my advice to anybody who is fairly new in the uh, real estate investing is to start out slow. Maybe find that if you're going to get into residential flipping, single family homes, find that one that, that maybe needs a little bit of, of flooring and maybe a little bit of, of painting on the interior and the exterior, maybe a little bit of landscaping, nothing real serious, something that typically you can get in and get out inside of 30 to maybe 60 days. Uh, and get it back on the market and, and get it sold, get your money and move on to the next project. And my advice is to do that um, two or three times, just, just to kind of get the feel of the industry, um, you know, learn your way around the neighborhoods, finding the different houses, you know, until you yeah. get a real firm grip of the industry. Yep, start with paint and carpet. Do yeah. some paint and carpets. That's what yeah. we call them. Paint and carpet. Yep, that's what well, I said. Well, not, yeah. not always in Florida. There's not as much, but it could be paint and tile, I guess. But that's what we're talking about. Something simple that you can get in and get out pretty quickly. Yeah. Okay, let's talk about the number of projects that a newbie might want to take on at any given time. Well, again, if you're, if you're new and you're just starting out, you're probably going to want to take on one uh, if there's if there's small, quick in and out, 30-day type projects where again you're painting carpet, little landscaping type of a thing, you might be able to swing a couple of them at a time because there's just not a whole lot of managing needed uh, in those. People come in throwing some paint on the walls, um, but anything beyond that, I would I would think you might be stretching yourself early on. So so give yourself a break and and try one, maybe two at the most. Um, get them finished, get them cleaned up, get them sold, move on to the next project. Eventually, you'll get to the point where if you're if that's your forte, the 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 easy flips, then you might be able to squeeze in three or four at some point. Uh, but when you start getting into some of the more detailed flips, then you want to. You want to pace yourself. Pace yourself. Yeah. Pace yourself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that, that makes yeah. sense. So pacing and timing, that's a good thing to talk yeah. about. When you have multiple projects going at the same time, you want to make sure that you're timing it in such a way that your your subcontractors or your people can roll from one job to the next. 
as much as yeah. possible. Yeah. Right? Ideally, 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 that's not always that's not always the case. And and to be honest with you, it's pretty tough to do um, because you're not their only client. You're not their only project. They've got other things going. So uh, it may be it may be running them from this one, and then there may be a, a week lag before you can get them into the next one. But all of that needs to be decided with your contractor, with your subcontractors right up front. Say, look, I've got two projects going. I want to get this one painted on Tuesday, and I want to have this other one started by next Monday so that everybody understands. Yeah, everyone's on the same page. Yeah. That just makes good sense. And, of course, time is money. We've talked about this on other shows. Time is money. You don't want to have something sitting there waiting for someone else to come, if at all possible. Yep, yep. So. that's it. Okay, um, and then this one I think is the most important thing, hiring professionals. So, uh, don't do the work yourself. <laughs> right. Don't do it, my right. friend. Especially when you get into some of the more detailed flips um, where you're changing cabinets, countertops, toilets. Unless candies. you're a contractor. Yeah. Right. yeah, absolutely. I mean, if it's something that you've done for a living in the past or or you're doing it currently, then you're probably not watching this show. Yeah, <laughs> that's um, a good point. <laughs> but um, if you're if you're new, know your limits. Know mm -hmm. that you know you can't do it all. It might look really easy on some of these HGTV <laughs> programs, <laughs> right. but it's not. Remember, they always go to commercial break, and when they come back, the problem problem fixed. is solved. Um, and that's not life. The flip is done yeah. in the one hour program. Yeah. <laughs> Right, yeah. so think about that. Yeah. That's that's not, and something to really consider is your skill set. Right, know your skill set. Know what you're capable of and what you are not capable of. I know I can paint, but I'm slow. Right, I'm slow, slow. <laughs> well, and, you know, and that's a good point. Um, if we're going back to the the paint and a little landscaping and that kind of thing to get this house just fixed up and back on the market then you know maybe maybe you do want to grab a couple of rollers and and do it yourself but it goes back to the time is money thing mm -hmm. do you want to spend your weekend painting this house or would you rather spend your weekend finding your next flip right so these are all things you know if you're not in a big rush if you're not in this thing to make you know a lot of money then maybe you want to take your time and and sift through it but most most real estate investors are eager to go from project A to project B and on and on and on. And so you can't spend too much time in anyone trying to do the yeah. work yourself in yeah. any one house. So if you think about this, if this interior or exterior of this house is going to take us a week or two weekends or whatever, you know, if you're working a full-time job because you're just brand new at real estate investing, you still have your full-time job you might be evenings and weekends so think about how long is it going to take us to get that done and could a professional come in and spray it in a day or right. roll it exactly. in a day probably exactly. so you really have to think about those things so time is money yep. right yep. you have to think about where your time is best spent yep. and i think out there finding your next deal yep. is the answer to that question for sure and you'll find out over over the over the course of time that all of these things that we've talked about today they all go hand in hand. One builds off of the next, and that's just a learning process, and it's something that you'll learn uh, as you get involved in, in real estate investing. Yep, yep, absolutely. And definitely, if you are in the beginning stages still, you're going to want to be a part of the Savvy Flipper course. So hop on over to beflippinsavvy.com and get signed up for our next free masterclass. And we'll tell you all about that. We can help you with the missing pieces in your education. Okay, so let's move on to um, stuff that is also important, but not nearly as much fun. All of this next one, the tool of the week. The tool of the week this week is a vision board. So you might roll your eyes and go, how does that have anything to do with flipping? We are huge vision board believers. You can call it a dream board, you can call it a goal board, whatever you want to call it. But we have had one for many, many years. And we like to keep our old ones so that we can pull them out and say, oh, look. Yeah. <laughs> look at, as a matter of fact, the, before we moved to Florida, the house that we put on our board, 
Our house looks so much like that. It's yeah, almost creepy it's just, how that yeah, works out. It's, it's a little but weird. It's a place for you to sit down and spend some time deciding what do we want the future of this business to look like for us, or maybe the future of our lives even as we become full-time real estate investors, if that's your goal. If you just want to do this on the side, that's fine too. What does that look like? There's something really powerful about pictures. Absolutely, absolutely. And it needs to be... Once you get it done, you just get yourself a piece of cardboard or what have you. And, Poster and board, you, yeah, it's prettier. When you see a picture that you that you like of a house or a car or a, or a dog or whatever it <laughs> might be, you cut it out, you pin it on that board, and then you put that board someplace where you see it every single day, multiple times a day. And There's just something to it. Your yeah. brain picks it up even when you're not looking at it. Yeah. I often talk to my clients about getting their goals, their savvy goals written and up on the board, up on the wall by their computer. Uh, if you're left-handed, off to the left side of your computer. If you're right-handed, off to the right side. Because even when you're not looking at them, your brain is still seeing it. Yeah. So yeah. there's something powerful there. I don't totally understand the, the connection of all that, but it works. Well, so. I think it also it keeps, you, it keeps you focused, it keeps you... Um, driven toward toward that end goal you know it keeps you motivated reminds you of your why right why am I doing this why am I giving up my evenings and my weekends to build a real estate investing program or a real real estate investing business it's to have a better life for you and yep. your family yep. yeah okay now we're gonna talk about some business savvy there always has to be a bit of business savvy in what we're talking about and I touched on it a little bit already, but let's talk about your business goals. What do you want this business to look like? Remember that it is a business. If you're treating it like a hobby, you're going to get hobby results. So when you think about your business as a real estate investor, what do you want this to look like? Do you want this to become a full-time gig? If you do, then you need to treat it like a full-time gig. So getting your goals out of your head and onto paper is a huge first step. It's also going to be a huge first step before you can even create the vision board that we were just talking about, knowing what it is that you want. We talked about it a little bit when we started today in this episode because we're talking about getting started, right? Make some decisions about what you want. If you're going to be a flipper, and that's your goal, that looks different in the goal department, right? Absolutely. Than yep. being a wholesaler. Yep. So making some of those decisions up front and then think about um, how much money you want to make from this. That's part of your goal setting. If you can say, all right, I want to flip two houses a month and that's my goal is to bring in that to bring in an extra $20,000 a month into our home. What does that mean to us? How does that change our lives when that kind of money is added to our budget? Yeah. Right. So those are all decisions to make right up front. What is, what is it that we're looking to do? If your goal is to be a landlord, then the math gets a little more complicated, but how much am I paying on that mortgage every month? How much am I collecting on the rent every month? How much is the, what is the difference that I'm going to get to put in my pocket? every month right right there's that ongoing monthly income that larry was talking about with the added benefit the added perk if you will of equity right, right. as that right. equity because builds you, up yeah regardless because you still own the house yeah obviously so your net um, worth is yep. is going up and then somewhere down the road the mortgage is going to be paid off yep and now you make even more money on it, right? <laughs> because that rent keeps coming in. So it's a different kind of investing. It's more of a long term. There's two sides to that coin, of course. We're really excited about um, our adventure into short term. Because short term rentals are um, a different beast. A right. lot more money right. potential, and they're just they're just a different fun. Yeah. Especially if you live in a place like we live in Florida. Yep. So yep. perfect place for it. Okay. Um, let's move on to talking about how to get our goals in a form that we can do something with them. Let's start by doing a big brainstorm dump. And that always makes people go, oh, I don't want to do this. But seriously, just sitting down, pen in hand, and just start writing down anything that comes to mind. 
what do I want this business to, and dream big don't be afraid okay. to to say I want this in six months I want this to replace my my full-time income right or yeah, and don't think that setting goals has nothing to do with what you're trying to do as a real estate investor um, because trust me, it, it does. If you don't know where you're going or what you want out of this process, then any road, you know, it doesn't matter which way you go. It's, you're not going to get there. You've got to have a map. You've got to have a road map to, to get to where you want. And that's what this goal list is, that she's talking about is. Right. So getting that, that brain dump that just says, these are all the things that I want this business to bring to us. So I, what, I, what I want it to look like. Um, when I talk with people about their goals or I do, you know, I speak publicly about setting savvy goals, which is what I call them, which of course that training is available in the, the new flipping by the numbers course that's, uh, that's available setting goals. There's kind of a process to it. So understanding how, how to do that is important. But when I talk with people about it, it's really about saying, what do I want the activity of my day to be? What do I want the day-to-day -day stuff to look like? It's easy to think, oh, I'm going to be a, you know, whatever, and then have a preconceived idea of what the activities really are for that. Right? So you can think, oh, I'm going to be a real estate investor. And that means that every day I'm just going to go from job site to job site, making sure that my workers are, are busy little bees doing, <laughs> doing the work, and then we're going to sell it, and I'm just going to be rich. Or maybe they have the fantasy that um, they're just going to buy these houses and then somebody's going to do the work, right? And then they get to show up and they get to decorate, right? They get to make it all fancy and pretty and then they sell it and we all make lots of money. <laughs> yeah. yeah, it's their project. They can do with it what they will. That's true. I mean, true. if they want to be that involved in it, sure. That's yeah. true. But I'm just here to say that the the activities that you do on the day-to-day -day basis, that's what we're interested in when we start talking about goals. What do I want to do with my time right. from yeah. day to day? Well, the bottom line is if you're not organized, especially when you're getting into investing, if this is going to be a, a full-time type of a business for you, um, everything has to be laid out. Your day has to be laid out or it'll get overwhelming to the point where you get frustrated and, and you give up. And we've seen that so many times mm -hmm. with people. They think, wow, you know what, this is great. Um, a couple that, that we're reading uh, about just the other day had a wonderful flip. The house turned out wonderful. They made great money and whatnot. And her, and her final words were, but we'll never do it again. So <laughs> right. it was just extremely <laughs> stressful. So everything, you, you want to make sure that you've got all your ducks in a row. Yeah. So they were both um, attorneys, I believe, mm -hmm. and worked full time in, in their practice as attorneys. And tried to do it themselves. And did all the work themselves. So they um, probably bought wrong. You know, they probably didn't buy uh, correctly. You know, we can't pay retail when we're going to do a flip, right? doesn't right. work that way. Um, so they probably bought wrong, and then they did the work themselves. They also didn't pay attention to the neighborhood that they were in. So the neighborhood they bought in um, ended up being less than desirable for what they were trying to do. Um, they didn't pay attention to the surrounding comps. What were the houses in the area selling for, and what did they look like? Did they mm -hmm. have granite countertops? Did they just went in and made it beautiful. And indeed, it was beautiful. But in the, when it push came to shove, <laughs> it was difficult to get their price that they wanted back out of it. They got close, but the six months that yeah. was supposed to be 60 days oh. and the stress of working every evening and every weekend for six months to make it happen, they were like, yeah, never again. Yeah. So... All that to say, be really clear on what your goals are right up front. What do you want to what do you want to get out of this as a business? Don't fall in love with the house. <laughs> yeah. That's, yeah. That's really what it boils down to. Unless you plan to fix it up and keep Buy it and yourself. Hold. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Buy and, hold. and if you're going to fix it up and you're going to rent it out, just be aware that renters are not going to treat your home usually like you would treat your home. So there's that. Yep. <laughs> Okay. All right. So just a quick recap of what we talked about today. We're going to decide first what it is that we want out of our flipping business. We're going to start slowly, maybe some paint and carpets up front. 
um, rather than jumping into big, difficult projects. Like full flip, correct. Hiring professionals so that you're not doing the work yourself. Um, not to say that you couldn't do a little landscaping if you're one of those people. I'm not one of those people because I don't like to get my fingernails dirty or, or get dirty at all. <laughs> right. But so just knowing who you are and what your what your skill set is, um, and then remembering that time is money and your time is better spent out finding that next deal. Yeah. Right. Because that's yeah. where the that's where the money comes in, especially if you're a wholesaler. Correct. Out there finding that next deal, negotiating. And then, of course, if any of those pieces are missing in your education as a new real estate investor, we're going to send you to BeFlippingSavvy.com. Get signed up for our master class. That's coming up soon, and it's free. And we spend five hours together and teach you all of the things that you need to know about inspecting, um, estimating, project management, what yep. are tools, yep. talk yep. about tools, some business savvy, some savvy goals, all the yep. things that you're going to need. So we would love to help you out as a brand new investor. Okay. I look forward to seeing you guys in the comments. Share with us your vision board, some of your business goals, and some of your dreams and aspirations as a new real estate investor. Yeah. That would be That'd be fun. That'd be fun, yes. Yeah. Now, you can email us at hello at the savvy flipper dot com, and we would love to hear from you. Share with us your, your um, struggles. Share with us if there's anything you'd like for us to cover on the show. We're always looking for new and exciting ideas to share with you, the new savvy flipper, to help you be more flipping savvy. So... We will be sure and mention you on the show if you send us a, a suggestion. Um, and we'll even mention your business if you include that information. Say, hey, I'm in such and such area. You never know who's going to go, oh, I've been looking for a wholesaler in my area and be able to find you in that way. Yeah, yeah. So we encourage you to reach out to us. Okay, so next week we'll be back here, same time, same place, to give you some more exciting information about being a savvy flipper. And in the meantime, just not going to beat this, this, but we are so excited about our upcoming class and we'd love to see you there. So get over to BeFlippingSavvy.com and get registered before this master class closes. We'll see you guys next week. Thanks so much for being with us again today. All right. Thank you. We'll see you Take next care. week.